What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we have, uh, <laughs> let's just say, a quite special unboxing. Um, a special unboxing that's so special that I took work off today to unbox it. That's actually a lie, it's election day, that's why I took work off, and if you're watching this when I upload it, and you live in Illinois, go vote. But anyways, that's not the point. This is a very special machine that does not exist in the United States. I got this from the lovely Vacuum Lover 1, whose well, who's channel I may include in the description. He doesn't really post very often anymore, to my knowledge, but hopefully I remember to add that. I did pay a good chunk of money for this, considering, you know, um, it's not in bad shape for sure. It's definitely in really good shape, but obviously some of that price goes into the fact that this machine is not common in the States. And it was also modded in a couple different ways, so that of course is factored into the price as well, which I mean I thought was still reasonably fair. Hell, it was a lot cheaper than I would have sold one of these at, because I would have definitely sold it for a lot more. But, trying to get this like weird hacking, hacking, you know, um, the strange box and trying to get this sort of carved up because it's essentially two boxes jammed together. Not the not the way I would package a very rare machine, um, but you know, the Wildcat came in a similarly jank box and it arrived just fine. This is actually one of two of these machines, or I should say similar-esque machines that I'm getting from Nathan. The other one will arrive in a few days. And that one, I will not hint as to what it is until it gets here. Although this one's arguably way more exciting. I think most people would agree with that fact. So now we're just going to attempt to make sure that this top layer is removed. Almost. I got most of the sides free. Oh, come on. This box is being rather difficult, but we will persevere regardless. It's really this side that's still giving me. some trouble. Probably cut the tape. So I may have un I may have done this incorrectly. I may I perhaps was likely designed to open the, the larger part. Okay. You know what? I take back what I said about the packaging. This is this seems perfectly adequate. I wouldn't exactly have let the cord out this haphazardly, but wait, I thought this had a US plug on it. I thought this had a US plug. I'm hoping that's just the original cord being thrown in with it, and not the cord that's attached. Because I was under the impression this machine was modified with a US motor and a US cord. Because why would you put a US motor in it and not change the cord when that's the easier of the two to replace? Alright. But we have a wand. You got loads and loads of bubble wrap packaging. 
honestly very happy, very happy with the packaging job. I commented on the box, but in reality it arrived just fine, so no real complaints. We've also got a little cardboard backing here for some more protection. Has a UK cord. I can't use this. What? I thought this had a U. I, I was told this had a US plug on it. <laughs> At least I. I swear I was. I. Why would you? I mean, I was definitely told it had a US motor in it. Why would you put a US motor in it and not a US cord? Because the cord is generally easier to replace. Alright, so before we get to that, we'll... Well, the good news is, I, I think I have an extra cord somewhere for a Dyson. I think it's for DC07 or 14, and I think that'll fit this machine. I really, really hope that's the case, because if so, then I'm kind of screwed, because I can't use this. And what is the point of, I mean, I guess I'd get a plug adapter, but I don't think I have a UK plug adapter. And if you have to adapt the plug anyways, what's the point? I mean, I suppose you could just leave it on the end of the end of the plug, so I guess it's not a big deal. Where is the knife? I just had my knife, and I don't know what I did with it. Uh, I set it somewhere... Okay, well, that's... Where is it? Over here it is. Okay, so now we're going to... We're going to open this up. Gently trying to unwrap this without damaging it. Because it's not like you can get these in the States very easily. Or in general, I don't know if you can even still get parts for this machine. I would assume not, because it's definitely been, de been deprecated over a decade ago by, by Dyson, in case you haven't figured out. In case you haven't figured out yet that this is the Dyson. I'm just pulling off each layer of this. There we go. Okay, I think I I remember asking if I could get the proper set of attachments with it instead of the DC07 attachments. This is a DC07 crevice tool. So hopefully the other attachments are in the box as well. Cuz I was this is in case you haven't figured it out, this is a Dyson DC04. I was originally going to buy from this person a DC04 lime, but he had had an issue with it where the spine had broke on it, but he offered this one for sale. He actually didn't even mention it to me. He had posted it in one of the backing groups, and and uh, I immediately jumped on it. And was like, yes, I'll take that. I love, I love this color scheme. Um. For some reason, this looks really rough right here. I'm not sure why. Obviously, this top piece has been replaced. That actually feels quite nice. It feels very similar to what you'd find on... Ruby, go. It feels uh, close to what you'd find on a DC-07, but it actually feels better than on a DC-07. It feels more rounded for some reason. We also have our wand cap, which is very bulky on this machine instead of what we later found on the DC-07. The springs on these like to fail a lot. And also we have, again, a crevice tool that fits on the back, very similar to DC-07, but it has two clips, two sort of uh, bits of plastic that the crevice tool just bends out of the way and clips into instead of the DC-07 where you actually have a clip that it clips into. These tend to break a lot on these. And we have a very similar button I really enjoy this, this like purple and green color scheme. 
We did get this color scheme on the DC-07 here in the States. That was the DC-07 full gear. But on the DC-04, this is the absolute. Ruby, what do you want? Oh. Alright, so. Ruby will watch as I unbox it right here. Well, then again, I maybe, because I know I mentioned that I bought another machine off him, maybe he, whenever I'm asked about the attachments, I'm wondering if he included those with the DC-07, or I just spoiled it, with the DC-07 that I bought off him, because theoretically if he includes the four attachments with the seven and the seven attachments with the four, then when I get the second one, I can just switch them. So, I, I'm assuming that's what he did, but I'll probably ask him. Yeah, because this definitely has DC-07 attachments on it. So now, to unbox. I'm going to have to grab that knife again. Again, th this unboxing is taking a while just because there's a lot of good packaging, but that's good. I would much rather it take a lot longer and then be confident that the product arrives in good condition than not. I'm trying to get this I'm trying desperately not to scratch the machine. And just making sure Hey, I'm getting it. Here we go. And oh, good. I do see the attachments. So he just he just gave me both sets, which I'm definitely not complaining about. So these are the original DC-04 attachments. We'll get to those in a sec. So he just gave me an extra set, which I'm definitely not complaining about. So sorry, Nathan, if I jumped the gun on that. Oh god, not this type of tape, really? So Nathan, in future, use painter's tape instead of packing tape when you tape anything to the machine. This type of tape leaves residue. Alright. So, so much bubble wrap. Holy crap. Holy crap. So much bubble wrap. Alright. So now, we'll go ahead and undo... Oh wow, this has a lot of fading on it. This is really faded. Hopefully that's not brittle. So now, I'm going to find a way to cut this tape. Put this down at the machine. And then, attempt to, there we go, gently Okay, good, it didn't leave residue. Okay, that popped off. And the tape on, there we go. Okay, so apparently this is the much thicker type of tape that actually doesn't leave residue. So I'll take back what I said, it didn't leave any residue. And hi, Ruby. Hi, Rubes. Okay, I'll move this out of the way. And so this, as you can see, is okay. I don't know if is there supposed to be a little thing that sticks out here? Because if it is, it's broken off. I mean, if it is broken off, it's broken off very clean. So, so we've got okay. Is this lower hose? Okay, lower hose needs a flip. 
So, for those of you that are familiar with Dyson, you may know this machine already. This is the Dyson DC-04. Not the DC-07, not the DC-14. This is the DC-04, which is the final iteration of the dual cyclonic Dysons that were manufactured in the UK. Although this one might be, this one might be a, a Malaysian unit. But um, at some point, prior to Dysons existing in the U.S. market, they existed in the U.K. originally, as they were a British-owned company with dual cyclonic machines. Now, we never got them here in the States because instead, Dyson had a contract with Iona Appliances, which came later on, and we got the Phantom machines instead. So, basically, the U.S. equivalent to this machine would be the Phantom Cyclone XT, although they don't look very similar. In terms of features, they are the two equivalent machines, and they also came out at very similar times. So we've got this hose, which doesn't appear to lock in, which is kind of strange. Okay, it, it starts to lock in, but then it doesn't. I don't know if that's by design or not, because there's a button here. So the way that the DC-04 works is, unlike the DC-07, DC-04 does not have a reversible wand. So that was not introduced until the DC-07. So you're designed to leave the wand in the main orientation like you would find on a DC-01, a DC-03, or a Phantom. So the attachments go right on the end of the wand like that, and you cannot flip over this handle to get a more... Wow, this is, this is really tore up right here. Wow, that's... That's like it was like glued, like broken off and then glued back on. Okay, that's a bit strange. Although it feels pretty smooth though, so I'm not too bothered. So the idea is that you can use this in the same way that you would use a DC-01. In fact, if you look at this wand, this actual wand itself looks just like a DC-01, only with a loop handle added instead of the little, the little uh, grip on the top. So. Uh, fundamentally, even the DC-07 wand is very close. And in the case of this DC-04, the lower cord hook, hook does not go all the way back down because it would get in the way of where the crevice tool sits, because the crevice tool sits very high on here. Um, so that's very interesting. That's another thing they fixed on the DC-07. DC-04, however, is very pop was very popular in the UK, even onto the DC-07's um, introduction, primarily because of the fact that the dual cyclonic design was way quieter in its implementation than the, especially the very early DC-07s. The early root cyclone technology on the DC-07, with the cyclones being, with the tips of the cyclones being pointed towards the top, created a lot of air turbulence in the top of the cyclone pack on the DC-07, and that made DC-07s much louder than the DC-04, from my understanding. Now, I've obviously never heard of DC-04 in person, and unfortunately, I'm not going to today because this has a friggin' UK plug, which I was not aware of, so I have no way to plug this in. I'm very disappointed about that um, because I do not have a UK plug adapter. Um, but allegedly, oh wow, these wheels look awful. Mm. Yeah, these wheels are torn up. I wonder if I can, if I can, uh, like buff those a little bit to make them look nicer. This machine does have some fading on the gray parts, but thankfully it doesn't feel brittle, so that's good. Um, but yeah. So one other difference between this and the DC-07, of course you have a power button uh, up on the top next to the wand. Again, in a very similar spot to what we'd find on like the Phantom Fury, only on the opposite side. And then we also have our cyclone pack, which pops off just like this. This handle is a lot bigger and beefier than it is on the early DC-07s, so these didn't break on the 04s nearly as much as they did on the early 07s. And then, the, But they did remedy it on the later 07s by adding a little plastic buffer guard. Now we do have a HEPA filter right down here, which on this unit just pops off with um, just any sort of amount of force. Uh, we do have a HEPA filter in here that's been replaced, allegedly. And then right here, we, we pop this open. It's a bit harder to get to than on the DC-14, 
but we do have a very good condition filter, just a little bit of dust on there, discoloring, nothing too bad. This is definitely a replacement filter, which is great. I was very happy about that. I mean, for the price I paid, this should have a new clutch and new filters and all that. So it's definitely good that it does. So. But yeah, so that filter, again, the, the top of this is very analogous to a DC-14. They obviously would later reuse this design on the DC-14 because you have the filter that pops out on the inside of the Cyclone and you have the exact same two storage posts for the tools. Now, of course, I've got an extra set of DC-07 tools now with uh, apparently the apparently the strips on the upholstery tool have been replaced. I've never seen that before. Uh, brush is in good shape, and then of course the crevice tool that I pulled off earlier is also in good shape. But here are the original tools. Now granted, this machine would have came with bright green tools. For some reason here in the U.S. we never got the fancy color tools. We only ever got the steel color tools. But a standard edition to the DC-04 came with these light gray tools that have a really nice sort of like silver fleck in the tool which is quite nice you know i'm very much a fan of that they do feel a bit hollower and a bit cheaper but i don't mind that because tools to me aren't as important this this one feels like a generic replacement of the crevice tool actually these both of these look like generic replacements because i don't see any dyson branding on them so i was going to say oh they feel cheaper but that's why it's because they're aftermarket but i'm not bothered so now we're going to pop the siphon assembly back on, which can be a little tricky to get on properly. And hopefully this is within frame, but we can put our dusting brush right there, our upholstery tool. Well, this is kind of difficult. The upholstery tool is kind of difficult to get on. Okay, you have to like, you have to like slide it into place and then snap it on. There we go. So that's on. And then finally the crevice tool clips on. There's a little groove. There's a little groove right here that it sits into. And that <laughs> a little loose, but yeah, so it sits in. It's supposed to sit in like that, but this one's a little loose and worn out. Which I guess explains why a DC07 crevice tool was originally on here, because it's a bit beefier. Okay, so Okay, so I guess it's designed to go this way because there's a bit less play this way. Okay, so we've got that. Um, also another difference of the DC-04 while we're on the topic of the Cyclone Pack, Dyson had not yet introduced the ability to have a drop-down bin. So so you, could, you didn't have an easy empty bin. So in the DC-04's case, you had to press this button, which on the DC-07, you actually couldn't press unless it was open. And then you have your internal cyclone, so it's just a basic dual cyclonic cassette. And then, ooh, that smells bad. And then we've got the just a standard dump out bin, very similar to what we find on a DC-01. In fact, this internal baffle um, with these extra little grooves that stick out were eventually added to the DC-01. But this, it is otherwise an identical piece to the DC-01. They aren't inter interchangeable. So, and then there's also, of course, a cyclone discharge chamber that is internal, much like you'll find on the Phantoms and on the newer Dysons. So all that is nice. So basically you would just dump this out, although, you know, this, this uh, handle feels kind of weak considering how weighty this is, so I would probably hold it on the bottom and dump it out that way. And there's one little bit of dust that fell out. But yeah, not in bad shape. Definitely in really good shape, very happy with that. I don't notice any cracks or anything. So you just gotta line up, line up the back piece. There's another clip on the back. And then you click this on, and there you go. That's your entire bin and cyclone assembly. So that goes onto the machine, just like that. Again, it doesn't like to line up at first. You have to really kind of, you have to really kind of mess with it to get it to pop on. So definitely some usability. Um, issues with this that I can see that they definitely improved on the DC-07. This cleaner head's a little bit loose as well. The C-clips aren't super tight on this model. 
but we do have, from what I understand, a brand new clutch assembly. And now I'm gonna pull the camera down to show you the bottom of this because one interesting little tidbit about the UK Dysons, first off, look at that bright green brush roll. That's, even the brush roll is kind of color coded on these machines. And the bottom is also not too scraped up, just a little bit of scraping. So the DC-04 and just uh, the UK Dysons in general have a much narrower opening. Now, we only saw this in the States with the DC-07 carpet because that machine was so uncommon they didn't bother to develop a new face sole plate for. But oh, some of these wheels are locked up or not. not this, this one's locked up entirely. And then this one's also locked up. This one spins fine. This one spins fine. This one's kind of, this one's mostly locked up. So I'll have to free these wheels a little bit before I push this on any bare floor. Hi, Rocco. And so this has a lot narrower of an opening. So the suction is going to be sealed a lot better on this compared to the, to the US versions. So I do wonder if that will improve performance. Even the brush roll appears to be better than what we got on the US units. There's a lot less gap between these bristles. And the bristles, like, they're not quite as stiff, but they're actually, like, a proper amount of stiffness. They're not overly stiff to the point where they're sharp like on the US DC-07 and DC-14s. I don't understand that. I don't understand why they w Dyson would intentionally gimp the US machines and make them weaker. But I feel like if I put this brush roll in, the, in, a, in a US Dyson with this sole plate, or at least the equivalent, I feel like it would clean a lot better than what we natively got in the States with the larger sole plate openings and the much just sparsely packed bristles on the brush roll. Ooh, so apparently these bristles are in fact sharp because I just got one in my finger and it actually hurt. So yeah, I don't like... So I actually just poked myself and now I'm bleeding, so that's not great. So, for whatever reason, these bristles are just sharp and I don't understand why. But yeah, so anyways, this um, was a DC-04, and we'll look over a couple other little things on this. Of course, we have the advertisement for the self-adjusting head. A lot of the other aspects on this are very similar to what you'd find on a later DC-07. We've got the valve pipe. And again, the actual buttons seem to be a bit more brittle. It's just, it seems like they were you know, made better over time with the DC-07 and the DC-14. We've got an ad here for Tony's Dysons. Apparently a Dyson refurbished, yeah, refurbished corded Dyson. Okay, that's interesting. So, and then of course we've got the UK helpline. Then we also have the U-Bend as well, very similar to what we find on a DC-07. And the hose kind of, instead of the hose connecting directly to the U-Bend, there's this actual piece of the housing that the hose clips into, and there's less, less material on the hose itself. But other than that, it's pretty decent. We have a cord winder that points upwards, so you're clearly designed to wrap this upwards. And then we also have our power button right here. Again, very disappointed that I can't use this. I wish I was made aware of the fact that this had a UK cord on it, which I still would have purchased it, but at the very least then I could have known and I could have purchased, you know, at the same time purchased a plug adapter so that way I had one in preparation for this video. So I'm really disappointed about that. But um, anyways, so as disappointing as it is that I can't run this, this is still is a very, very nice machine to get and of course you will see many many more videos of this machine on this channel as I'm not the only obviously because Nathan has another one of these but I'm one of the few collectors that have 
a UK Dyson in the States, let alone one that's been retrofitted with a US motor. Now, this is definitely a really interesting machine. Of course, this is the absolute version, so it's got the brush control and the HEPA filter, stuff that was standard on the US Dysons, but for some reason in the UK, they didn't exactly, you know, they, they had many more options for SKUs. The DC-04 Lime, which has the green on this, but was gray instead of purple, was the base model DC-04, which did not have brush control, just had a standard stretch belt, and it also had the basic pad filter instead of the HEPA filter. And the actual quality of the pad filters on these are pretty bad, but the HEPA filters are decent. Now, of course, this was a sealed system at one point, but now the seals are likely going to be pretty shot. But, hey, at least it's still interesting. And, you know, I don't know if I've ever held... I don't know if I've ever had something with a UK plug. Now, there is... One of the things that many people in the UK uh, point out is the fact that if you step on one of their plugs, it's way more painful than American plugs. So let's just... Te oh, God. Oh, ow. Okay, so that's definitely true. So, uh, yeah, so that, <laughs> that definitely is, um, uh, quite painful to step on. So you definitely don't, don't want to step on that. So, you know, um, the U S we don't get everything right in America, but you know, at least our plugs don't look like this. Although having the individual power switches built into the outlets, I think that's a good idea. And also having this, this plastic buffer as well. I think that's also a good idea just to make sure that if the plug is slightly out of the socket, it's not exposing bare metal. So, you know, there's some good aspects. I feel like the U.S. and the U.K. could merge together and form the ultimate electrical system. There's definitely advantages and disadvantages to both the ways that they do things. So anyways, that's uh, DC-04 Absolute. Of course, I can't actually use it, but I can at least push it around. And Yeah, I mean, it feels, honestly, that feels a lot better than a DC-07. To me, at least. I feel like if I lived in the UK, I feel like I'd like these versions a lot more than the the later Root Cyclone versions. Which I guess makes sense, because I like the Phantoms. And in a very similar vein, they have a much more simple Cyclone setup. Again, I'm really sad that I can't plug this in. I know I have a plug adapter from, like, Asia or South Korea with, like, the two round prongs, but I don't have a UK plug adapter. And I'm not aware of any local store to me that sells one, so I'm likely going to have to purchase one on online or something. But anyways, yeah, I, that really sucks because I that's disappointing because I can't run this now. And again, you know, I wouldn't have been upset if he had mentioned, oh, by the way, this has, you know, it has a U.S. motor, but it has a U.K. plug. You know, I wish he had told me just so that way I could have been like, okay, cool. Now that I purchase this, I'll immediately go on Amazon or eBay and buy an adapter so I have it by the time it arrives. But, uh, no. Because I was never really planning on buying a plug adapter because I initially was going to buy the DC-04 he had that didn't have any, you know, uh, modifications to it, to which I would have to buy a transformer, to which this would plug into the transformer anyways. So, anyways. But the other Dyson that I'm getting, the DC-07, does in fact have... Uh, a U.S. motor and a U.S. plug that was that was specified on that one at least. So it's possible that he might have just been talking about that one, and I got it confused with this one too. But I'm not sure because in the list, because when he posted this, he didn't mention it still having a U.K. plug, just that it was retrofitted with a U.S. motor. So, but either way, I'm not necessarily mad about that. Because after all, I did essentially get an extra set of attachments thrown in for free. So I suppose that makes up for it. Because, you know, if, the, if, a, set of, if a set of generic attachments are like, what, $10? I'm sure a plug adapter is also like $10. So not worried about that. So for those wondering, I ended up paying, I believe, two seventy five dollars for this. Um, plus shipping, which I didn't realize shipping wasn't included until after I'd already bought the vacuum. So that was another 45 bucks. But, yeah, so definitely very happy with this machine, super happy to have it in the collection, just, of course, disappointed that I can't run it, so I don't know how well it runs, I mean, for all I know, the thing might not even run, but I'm sure it does, so, 
I gotta get that plug adapter, I'll have to order it right after this video, and then we'll just have to hope and pray the thing works whenever the plug adapter does arrive. So, that is pretty much that. Kind of annoying I have to buy a plug adapter just for one machine, but what are you gonna do? Anyways, so that is the Dyson DC-04 Absolute Plus unboxing and a, a pretty basic overview in comparison to some other models. Um, but yeah, so that is pretty much that. This is Intelltech Studios signing out with this machine. So like I said, I'll buy that plug adapter and we'll find more, we'll find more, uh, or you'll see more videos on this, I should say, very, very soon. So anyways, this is Intelltech Studios signing out. Have a good one. Peace. And yeah, there is, of course, another one of these, as I spoiled to earlier, coming and that one is similar to a Dyson I already have. In fact, it's very similar to a Dyson I already have in terms of functionality. But it's another UK version that we never got in the States. And, yeah. So, and this one actually did have a... I mean, it's a DC-07, so I would think there'd be no excuse. There it obviously is a US motor and a US cord. Yeah. I don't know why I bought that one. I really didn't need it. This one is very interesting, but I figured... The other one, at the very least, if I don't end up needing it, I suppose I could always sell it on and get back what I paid into it. But yeah, so... But yeah. So anyways, this is Intelltech Studios signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace!